Today we are going to be looking at a little bit of a different piece of equipment. This is a change from my normal antique radios, TVs, and mid-80s computers. This is a Betacam SP editing recorder. Um, it's branded BTS, but really it's made by Sony. It is a BBW70, and it's from about 1993, and it has a problem, which I will show you right now. Problem is, tape playback only gives this screen, which is gray with flashing, it'll go black sometimes, you'll get flashes of lines like that. I'm not quite sure where the issue is, but try starting to narrow it down. Because, as you can hear, it's good audio. So, what I've done is drug out my scope. And what you're looking at now is the RF off of the video heads for the luminance channel, the Y signal, because um, Betacam SP is a component format, so it records the video in the two components, Y and C. And if I pause it, it does change. frame at a time and kind of get a little overlap once. This is probably, just from what I know of a video signal, that's probably the sync pulse there. Right there, that's the sync pulse coming off the tape. Furnace. Okay, after the interruption of the furnace, which is going to happen here in Northeast Ohio in the fall, now I was, I changed my test point, and this is the chrominant signal off tape, amplified, and it's about, each one of these divisions is 50 millivolts, so it's about peak to peak with the edges there, about 150 millivolts, or about 0.15 volts and where it's coming from is get my little LED flashlight here it's coming from here is the PMOD board and this is the C or prominence are at this point. Now I'm going to move this over to the luminance test point. Since I don't have one of those real fancy new scopes like some of you guys, had to make some quick adjustments and put it on the right test point. This is the RF output uh, of the luminance circuit. And I'm playing video. Now, just to prove that this all does work and that there is something on this tape, I'm going to put the tape into my player here just so that you know. And if I'd put it in the welcome mode. And there's some flickering because this is NTSC video. But yeah, same tape. So 
That's just to prove that it all does work. And that tape, this tape here, was recorded on this recorder here. So it records just fine. If you've never been inside of one of these decks, um, there is a signal chain, of course, and it, the signal goes from the DM56 board right into the TVC57 after it's been amplified, you know, filtered and such. So, the next test point that I have here is the TP400, which is the chrominance and CN on the time base corrector board. And I've let the settings on the scope exactly the same. As you can see, the signal is a lot lower. And it's changed because you know, this is actually the chrominance signal, but I am on. I changed my volts per division, if you've seen, from 50 volts per uh, millivolts per division to 10. Um, so what's going into this is actually a lot less powerful than what is coming out of the other board, or supposedly. There are always the RF test points, so I'm thinking, let me change this over to the other one. Now I've changed it over to the luminance. I've gone even to 5 volts, 5 millivolts of division. So it, the signal's not coming out of the DMARC board. And I've gotten some ideas of what that could be, and I'll show you those in a second. We're now at my workbench with the DM56 board. I have been told that these filters are the issue. Now, there's three of them here. And that what happens is there's they're potted in these little containers and there's a glue in there. And what happens is the glue becomes conductive and shorts things out. It's not too different from uh, all of you TV guys, um, old TV guys, from stuff like the cup weights and Philco Predictas and such, where it's all sealed in there and stuff goes bad. And um, So, what I've been told to do is to desolder them one at a time so I don't get them mixed up, of course and then start chipping out the glue with dental tools. So that'll be an interesting experiment to work with. Because I could buy, uh, there's currently a DM56 board on eBay. First of all, don't know its history, don't know if it even works. Someone just parted out of ETR. So don't even know if that would work. And secondly, it's $150. These people that sell these parts for these old decks know that people need them, and it's they're almost charging the same price as you know, like I saw a, a TVC7 board, that one that you saw me with, oh, with the test points with. It was new, Sony, it looked like a later revision than the one on my deck, but someone wanted three hundred and fifty dollars for it. They know that people do need these parts to keep these VTRs running to archive beta cam tape and they charge some pretty high prices. They also know that some of these parts are getting hard to find from Sony now. But as you can also see on this board, there are lots of lovely capacitors. Lots of lovely early 90s electrolytics. 
And these little things that look like balloons are titanium caps. Which, uh, the reason they're used on stuff like this is that they have really high capacitance for their small size. But they're not very reliable. I think most of them are rated in a reliability of 1,000 hours. Because they were originally developed to go they're also very heat resistant such they were designed to actually go into the guidance systems of a missile guidance system of a missile doesn't need to have a very high lifespan for obvious reasons but I'm going to start working on this and um, we'll see how it comes out now this whole video just in case you're wondering um, it is a little different I am hand holding this all and it's not being shot with my camcorder I'm actually shooting it with my new uh, phone which we will see how it all comes out this is actually the uh, footage from an iPhone 5 and it's supposed to be in 1080p whereas my camcorder is uh, 1080i and my old phone was 720p um, so we will see how that goes